The Moonshiner role in Red Dead Online is one of the more traditional Rockstar business type roles in the game, allowing you to open up shop in an official property so that you can produce an illicit product, in this case Moonshine, and deliver it to buyers for underground prices, get into some pretty intense gunfights with revenue agents trying to stop you and your business partners, and also embark on an epic journey with fun and engaging characters like Maggie, Lem, and more as you navigate their history of those who have wronged them, and set the record straight while you build your new Moonshine empire. And Today on the show, you will learn some of my best secrets and tips to implement in Red Dead Online so you can become the best moonshiner out there out on the frontier. Welcome back to the channel, everyone, and thank you so much for checking out this Red Dead Online Moonshiner Roll Guide for 2023. If you enjoyed this video at any point or if you just find it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it. And if you want to stay up to date with everything Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Online, consider hitting that subscribe button with your bell notifications turned on. Before we break down these five secrets, if you're just getting started and you have absolutely no idea how to go about acquiring the Moonshiner role and setting it up, you'll want to make sure you have reached rank 5 as a trader and completed at least one cell mission. After this, you'll have the opportunity to meet Maggie Fike, a notorious bootlegger. After that, Crips introduces you and you can purchase a Moonshine Shack for 25 gold bars. And before kicking the business into high gear, you'll also need a cook, whom you'll acquire via your first Moonshine Story mission. And after completing the first of five missions, you can either complete the rest later on if you want, or get started on producing your very own Moonshine. So with that said, let's jump into helpful tip number one. When it comes to your Moonshine property, what is the best location that you can use for your Moonshine Shack? The best location, in my opinion, is the Bayou NWA. I really enjoy the Bayou location because of the smooth trails and less bumpy rides, which translates to less bottles being destroyed during my Moonshine transport. But I also like the Bayou as a location because it has very small hops for deliveries, just north and south of Saint Denis, with one delivery in roads. All of which are really close in comparison to some of the distances that you have to go with other Moonshine Shack locations. If you're looking to make the cost of producing your Moonshine Mash cheaper, and you would also like to run bootlegger missions, the bootlegger missions for the Bayou Shack location can take you to surrounding towns of Rhodes and Saint Denis, in addition to the Braithwaite and Grey Plantations, and you're also close to the LeGras fast travel post there as well. Outside of the Bayou Shack, pay attention for a few collectible spawns like wildflowers, tarot cards on the shack benches and tables, and outside there are even some extra random dig spots around the property as well. With all of these collectibles spawning frequently outside of your Moonshine Shack, you're making money for another roll just by visiting this shack. And for those wondering, the Tall Trees location is also really good. It's probably my second favorite location for a Moonshine Shack, but LaGrasse still edges it out in terms of delivery distances, trail viability and drivability, collectibles, fast travels, etc. Ultimately, it's all your personal decision, but one I highly recommend you just disregard entirely is the new Austin Shack location. You're located all the way down the mountain next to the San Luis River, and there's just nothing going on there. I even switch up my location from time to time just for a change of scenery and extra variety for my Red Dead Online gameplay, but I never move my shack to that location because it's just that bad of a spot to do business. Trust me, do not even try wasting your time on it. Now for number two, let's talk about the best moonshine recipe to produce. Most of the time, players by default are probably going to be producing the moonshine that pays the most and leave it at that. But I propose an alternative who, for those who want even more significant gains out of the moonshine roll. Quick disclaimer, right now we have a double money bonus applied to all moonshine sale missions. So please do not pay attention to the sale value that you see on screen if you're watching during an event where there is no moonshine roll money bonus because there is double right now the sale value you see in the gameplay is doubled currently and this event is going to end at the end of january but for the best recipe and highest rate of return with the utmost profitability over time i highly recommend you make the berry cobbler moonshine for a few reasons for one it's because the buyer is virtually always available while it is two star moonshine and you can make up to 247 dollars per cell with the three star special recipes there's a few problems you're going to run into with those for one these recipes take antique alcohol bottle collectibles or wildflower collectibles, which means you're going to have less of those for your collection sets, and you'll only make an extra couple dollars using them in Moonshine compared to selling the sets, so it's not that much better and the profit margins don't make it really worth it in my opinion. But the big problem is that all recipes except for one won't have a guaranteed buyer when your Moonshine is ready. 
With berry cobbler, that's the exception. Appleberry crumb used to be the recipe you would want to do for the same benefit, but that was changed with the naturalist update in summer of 2020, and now berry cobbler is the recipe to make if you want a reliable buyer. I've done well over 1200 moonshine sells since the moonshiner rule changed two and a half years ago, and the berry cobbler buyer was unavailable only once from all of these runs. So it's not 100% guaranteed, but it's virtually 100%, and the chance of getting unlucky is so low, honestly, just don't even worry about it. If you do happen to get unlucky, well, the list will refresh soon enough and it will be like you're just making another recipe anyway but think about all the times that players wait for their three star buyers 10 minutes here 30 minutes there sometimes players even forget and after that they basically are just wasting their money fast traveling back and forth to the shack to sell their moonshine when the game notifies them it's ready and then it turns out they can't even sell it because the buyer isn't available i've been selling berry cobbler basically once every hour while i'm playing because this recipe is that consistent in four moonshine runs you're looking at over 904 dollars for only about 15 minutes spent on moonshine deliveries. Also, side note for your moonshine sale values, if you're wondering why your berry cobbler recipe isn't selling for $453.75 during this double money event or $226 normally, it's because you have not purchased your moonshine condenser and polished copper still upgrades, which will maximize profit. Also, in order to get the 20 bottles of moonshine to produce in 48 minutes instead of the usual 60 minutes, you're going to need at least moonshine roll rank 15. For number three, let's talk about moonshine deliveries. When it comes to these moonshine deliveries, how can you ensure that you protect your cargo of 20 bottles and deliver them to your destination in time without any of them breaking, thus you losing out on profit during your sale. I have a few easy tips to help make sure your moonshine runs go much more smoothly here. For one, you can use cinematic mode or use the wagon auto riding mechanic so your wagon controls itself and stays right on the yellow line while you ride towards your destination. When you get close to a revenue agent roadblock or checkpoint, sometimes you will be allowed to pass right through them and other times they may request that you stop your wagon so that they can inspect your wagon for contraband. Band. And there's two different strategies you can employ here. The quicker one would be for you to aim your weapon behind your wagon as you go through the revenue agent checkpoint, and in the case of them attacking you, you're already aiming at them as your wagon speeds through, so you can secure some very easy kills. You can also stop and loot them too if you're careful, but stopping too fast or going off-road will damage your wagon, so just keep that in mind. But overall, this strategy puts some of your moonshine bottles at risk, so honestly, if you'd prefer to eliminate all those enemies beforehand, that's the wiser choice. I'd recommend you stop your wagon slowly before you reach the checkpoint marked on your map. Shoot all the enemies there while you're staying a safe distance from your wagon so any stray bullets towards you do not break any of your cargo and then from there you can even hog tie the last enemy and put them on your horse so no more waves of revenue agents spawn and chase after you for the rest of the delivery. Using the auto riding mechanic in cinematic mode or with L2 is a safe bet with the exception of a few hairpin turns and bumpy railroad crossings. You're gonna memorize these risky maneuver areas though the more you deliver moonshine though so just don't worry too much about it. I just want to mention it in the this video so you have the knowledge when you sell your moonshine next. Now for number four, let's discuss some tips that you can use to supercharge the moonshine roll and rank it up fast so you can just focus on selling moonshine later for tons of money fast and easy. If you just acquired the moonshine roll for this event, here's how you can maximize XP and rank up fast with this roll. You should make weak three star moonshine. Weak moonshine will take the shortest to produce and it only affects the price. Flavoring three star moonshine gives the best moonshiner XP and when you deliver it, you will be getting 1,100 XP to be exact. If you lose too many bottles before you reach the seller, you can close and reopen your application and try again, but just be careful because this doesn't work once your moonshine wagon is fully destroyed. Also, helping other players with their sales is also recommended and really good for XP. You can get your friends involved or perhaps join a posse with some random players in your lobby to run moonshine sales with. In between your sales, you can do Moonshiner story missions, free roam events, and other easily accessible free roam content like the bootlegger missions by talking to Maggie at your Moonshine Shack for even more Moonshiner roll XP. The bootlegger events are the best for XP outside of actual Moonshine sales, but do keep in mind that you can only start one of these missions from Maggie once every 15 minutes. That being said, you're going to frequently find revenue agent roadblocks spread across the open world. Usually they're focused at major trail intersections and other choke points, so participate Participate in those whenever you see them if you're still in the process of ranking up the Moonshiner roll and want more XP for barely any other work at all. For number five, now here are just some other general information and tips for players out there who want to know every single little detail about this roll because there are some secret Moonshine flavors and recipes to acquire along with just some other good things to know about the Moonshiner roll if you're looking to get the most value out of it. So starting off, if you're looking for the Poison Poppy Moonshine recipe, I have a map linked in the description below of the 12 locations that Poison Poppy can spawn. You're going to see a white dot on that map and the event has a chance of spawning once you've avoided moonshiner content
content like missions, storyline missions, resupplies, selling, or generating moonshine for 30 minutes. And it's common to see this usually after loading into a new session after a showdown match or a mission, for example. Looting revenue agents will give you collectibles and other moonshine ingredients. And like I said before, if you hogtie a revenue agent to your horse and have it follow your wagon, you will prevent any more agents from spawning. This is more useful for trader deliveries, for example, but moonshiner deliveries are short and so it could be useful or it also could be not. Every three star recipe requires one collectible as well. So just use the collector map in Red Dead Online to find specific collectibles. Like I said before, three star moonshine delivered to a requested buyer will give you 1,100 plus moonshiner XP. And if you alert rival moonshiners on a mission, use a volatile fire bottle to immediately destroy their still. A normal fire bottle won't cut it if you try and blow up the still with that. And just for some last few tips and tricks here, toxic moonshine can damage players through walls even if the poison mist isn't visible and wash barrels will be located all around your map like your camp and moonshine shack and you can use these to sober your character if you drink moonshine right before you may need to use it twice if you're extremely drunk in the game coffee and almonds which are also located at the bar in your moonshine shack also sober your character up. So with all that said, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for watching this Moonshiner role guide for Red Dead Online 2023. This is a fantastic role and it's probably the one that I use most for accumulating massive amounts of money for very little work here in game. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video today and if you did, hopefully I earned your like on it. And of course, if you are new to my channel and you want to stay up to date with all the best Red Dead Online and Rockstar Games content, consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out on a single thing we post here on the channel. We consistently talk about updates, news, information, tips, tricks and even leaks and we'll keep you guys updated here on the channel daily so make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to follow me over on twitch twitter and instagram those are the best places to get connected with me outside of youtube and you're more than welcome to ask me any questions on those platforms you can follow me at hazardous hdtv and all of my social media links can be found in the description down below that being said thank you all so much for watching everyone i hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and i will see you guys in the next red dead online video adios amigos